students must make a minimum of 0.5 growth on the rubric scale. So rubric goes from uh, 1 to 4 um, on 60% of the domains. Uh, these rubrics, again, are aligned to the common core, so each rubric uh, actually spans two grade levels. So the ELA research rubric is from ninth to 10th grade. So that sort of helps to explain why we're, we're initially asking for a 0.5 growth. Um, in one year, the expectation is not that students would go from emerging all the way to advanced. Secondly, we believe uh, that sometimes a, a stagnant score actually also demonstrates growth because from quarter one to quarter two, students would, um, the, text, the te task complexity would actually increase uh, and the amount of scaffolding that the teacher provides would decrease. The second question was, how do you measure growth? Um, sorry, how do you measure impact? So if that's the amount of growth we want all kids to be making, um, how many kids actually need to make that growth for a teacher to either have low, moderate, or high impact? Uh, again, you can see that I provided the, the group two options and then gave them um, an opportunity to write in an option. The team, again, uh, went for a write-in option. Um, basically, they took the second option but added the caveat that students with excessive absences, and in our district we define that as 10 or more uh, unexcused absences, uh, that they would not be counted as part of this data set. Um, and that felt fair because then it wasn't really measuring the impact of the instruction being provided to students. So this is how we have taken, or yes, this is how we have tried to build a meaningful assessment system, and then how we've also tried to have it fit for our district-determined measures and how we plan to 